Hello, welcome to the Integrated Rangeland Management class here at the University of Idaho. I'm Karen Launchbaugh. I work as a rangeland ecologist and I know quite a lot about range management and I'll be directing this class. I'm going to take a few different changes and formats to this class than I have in the past. So I'm going to outline those in this uh, PowerPoint and I think you'll know what's going on after this. So first a little bit about me. I grew up on a ranch in uh, western North Dakota out on the Badlands. Got my, my master's degree at Texas A&M, so that was quite a change from North Dakota to Texas. PhD in Utah. I worked. My first job was in Texas, and now I'm back in Idaho. I've been here 20 some years, so I'm uh, pretty much going to stay in Idaho. And a lot of the examples that we use in the class are from Idaho, but also I'll throw some in from Texas and the Plains. Okay, let's start with what I hope to accomplish in this class. You guys all have a lot to bring to the table in terms of your knowledge of natural resources and, and rangelands. Um, and I'll try to set that up so that we can exchange information, but also bring new information into the class. Here's what I hope we can do. One is I hope that by the end of this class, we'll have a pretty strong understanding of what the challenges are for rangeland management. And we'll do that by listening to people, rangeland stakeholders who will meet on the field trip, but also I may bring them in as video conferences, also through video uh, chats, etc. Also read newspapers, magazines, and then uh, rangeland management is of course founded on a, on a body of knowledge that is science. So we're also gonna read some journal articles. The other is that I hope we can focus on biophysical, ecological, chemical, um, biological, but I hope we also look at the social science principles that underlie the, the change on rangelands. Uh, understanding rangeland management is all about understanding dynamic or changing systems, and it's not just the biology, the ecology, and the physiology. It is also the social science. So we got, we're going to try to look at both of those. I, I'm certainly an ecologist, so more of my expertise is on the former, so um, keep me honest. Uh, next, I hope that we can um, really be able to describe the potential options that range land managers have. The final project is called a rangeland innovation project and I hope that you'll bring your experience and your knowledge and, and let's try to be innovative. Let's try to add some options. Let's give people some options. What's new on the horizon? And then finally, let's create some management approaches that could address the challenges that we see. So we're going to listen to people and we're going to try to really suggest some new management approaches to the challenges of range management. So I've been teaching for a long time and uh, I tried something different in this class and I'm going to do it again this year. Uh, traditionally, I would inside the classroom, I would teach, um, I would give lectures, I would do content delivery and then outside of class I'd have students do problems and maybe interact or ask people questions and then of course there were tests and exams. It just doesn't seem like a very wise use of time in the modern day, so I'm trying what's called a flipped classroom. In a blended or flipped classroom, you do the stuff outside of class that's pretty easy to do, like listen to video lectures or web webinars or podcasts. And then inside the classroom, you do what you can, what no one else can do, and that is interact with other people. So inside, in the time that we're in the classroom, we're going to be talking to each other, we're going to be solving problems. I will add a bit of lecture to, to um, emphasize the things that were talked about online, but uh, this is going to be working in the classroom. For those of you who are on campus, you'll be in the classroom, we'll be in small groups or in, in the whole class. For those of you who are in the online section, we'll be working online in a video conference. And of course, there's still assignments and exams. Okay, of all the reading I've done, the, the, the loophole in all this, the problem is that before students come into the classroom, they have to have, have done the lectures. They've had to have listened to the material so that we can really build on that, not just do it again. So there's got to be a way to show comprehension, to show that you actually did the video. So you'll need to listen to the lectures on my YouTube channel. That's all information I'll show you in a few minutes. And then the first thing you do when you come to class is going to be to take a short quiz. It will show that you've read the material, that you've watched the lectures for this for that week, and that um, it will be part of your um, participation points for class. And of course, there's still assessments in the form of assignments and exams. Okay, so where is all that content and those video lectures? They are all online, but the easiest way for you to access them will be to go through BB Learn and just log into the site. And on that site, you'll see a, a tab that's called video, that's called lectures, 
and content. There's a sign for tests assign and assignments. And then of course there's grades. So for you, I'm going to put all the material on BB Learn. So get familiar with that format if you're not already. Uh, I, I just want to let you know, I also have an, a website that has all the same information. I maintain a website called rangelinemanagement.info. I do this primarily because I, I don't feel like anything I say in class should be held inside this class. Anybody can use this material. And so there's people all across the country that are using the lectures that I put together and they're improving on them and making them useful to their local environment. And you're certainly welcome to use anything that is on this class website at rangelinemanagement.info. Everything I have is um, open access, so you can go ahead and use it. Um, sure, it's nice if you um, give credit where credit is due, but I don't care. Just spread the good word, help people understand what rangeland management is. And if you want access to all the information in class, say five years from now, you decide you wanted to go back to something and now BB Learn is closed, you can go back to this class website. Okay, so how are the topics in class arranged? We're gonna, the first part of the class, I'll admit, is kind of boring. You gotta know some principles before you can build on them and really make wise management decisions. So the first part of, part of class is on plant animal interactions, uh, how do plants respond to disturbance, basically, and then also grazing principles, how do animals use plants in their environment. And then finally, um, my background is in animal behavior, so I'm gonna spend a bit of time on animal behavior. Of course, I'm gonna focus on wild and domestic animals but the principles of animal behavior are the same for people and rats and deer and elk and cows so we'll spend a, a couple weeks on animal behavior the second part of the class is all about integrating those things how can we use livestock to manage wildland fuels how can fire affect grazing what about invasive and exotic species how do those influence uh, rangeland health and how, what can we do about it uh, and then i'm also getting more into recreation and trying to understand how people experience rangelands through recreation and what those impacts are. And then the very, very last part is how do we put it all together? What are ways that we can include humans in collaboration and managing conflict? Oh, so here's a course calendar. Again, I said that first section is on plant animal interactions. That'll happen from this coming week, uh, this early in January, all the way through February. After we got that behind us, we can talk about grazing management principles. I'm not going to lie, this is a grazing management class. Uh, and whether you like livestock or not, that's one of the largest impacts that humans have on Earth. And so we're going to start to learn a lot about how, anim how humans manage livestock to accomplish goals or to have impacts. So that's the second part of the class, the grazing principles. I will try to emphasize wildlife uh, principles also in that section of the class, not just domestic livestock. Ah, then the last spring break. After spring break, we'll go into integration. How do you take these principles that we learned in the first half of the class and put them together to, to make management decisions? A really key part of this class are the field trips. I'll talk about in a second. And, and then after we come back from the field trips, we're going to put it all together and we're going to develop this innovation approach where we try to think about how people might do land management. Okay, here's the schedule. Uh, this is also available on BB Learn. Uh, there's kind of three major kinds of assessment in this class. Tests, there's a series of assignments that are on a rangeland plan, and then the final report is a rangeland innovation report. All of these assignments, except for the very final assi assignment, are due at midnight on Saturdays. So I will make tests for there's five tests. I'll make them available at noon on Friday and you'll have a couple of hours. They're time tests. You have no more than an hour and a half to two hours to complete them. But you can do it any time between noon on Friday and midnight on Saturday. So you have some flexibility. And those tests are for specific parts of the class. Uh, but you often have to dig back into early sections of the class to understand the questions. So they're rather cumulative, I'll warn you. So five tests. Uh, four before spring break, one after spring break that brings it all together. Um, the rangeland plan is an interesting assignment where you get to go out into the world, find a piece of ground, and start to apply some of these principles to that piece of ground. It's valuable because if someone ever asks you when you're applying for a job or if you're looking at uh, doing a project, if they ask you if you've ever done a, a management plan, you'll be able to say, yes, I did uh, a fictitious management plan in class because it's all of the all of the aspects of a management plan so that's the range plan it comes in four different sections again throughout the class so if you'll notice there's almost there's something due almost every week in class always on that saturday at midnight 
uh, then uh, then we go on the field trips, and then after the field trips, we'll um, develop this rangeland innovation report, which is basically trying to find ways to solve challenges that we saw on the field trip. Okay, so where do points fall out? Well, there's five tests, as I mentioned. They are worth 300 points. This class is 600-point class, so half of the points are in tests. They are open book, open note. The only thing you can't have on the tests is another person there working with you. You can um, look on the web, you can look in your notes, etc. But you just you need to work on it on your own. Um, most of the problems and questions I give you are real world questions that people have given me. So we'll see if you could um, really help people solve range problems. I mentioned the range plan. It's worth 135 points, so it's a pretty significant part of the class. It starts with selecting a site and then talking about the rangeland plants and animals that are at the site, and then making some grazing decisions, and then uh, putting it all together. And, and thinking about other things that affect that site and making a final plan. So again, at the end of this class, you'll have done a range management plan, a land management plan. The final project after the field trip is called a range innovation project, where we'll take what we learned in the field trip and bring it home. So I keep mentioning these field trips. I really think it's important that we take what we learn in class and get it on the ground. I just don't think you can learn range management in a textbook. So there's two field trips. They go Thursday through Saturday, the 16th to the 18th of April, or the 24th to 26th of April. You have a choice between either of these field trips, whichever one works for you. I'll have an online form to ha ha give you a chance to s say which one works best for you. I'll admit, this is early in April, so it's kind of cold. We're not going to see a lot of range, but we're going to get a good chance to talk to managers. One trip will be in the Council Cambridge side of Idaho, and the other will be in the Joseph Enterprise area of Oregon. So start thinking about what your April schedule looks like and then watch for information from the class to designate which field trip you need. So those are the main points. You should go ahead and go on to BB Learn and uh, see where the assignments are, are coming up already. And uh, go ahead and take a look at the video lectures for this week in class. And I'll see you in class.